indeed we're cooking. You and me, we're cooking, cooking with Chef D. My favorite type of fish is halibut. I love it. I love the meaty texture to it. I love it that you can cedar plank it, they can poach it. You can serve it cold. Um, you can serve it with a bunch of different sauces from like a lemon purple to like an olive tapenade. It's very versatile. Um, it's a forgiving fish to cook. Um, no, I, that would truly be my favorite. Welcome to At Home with Chef D. And I'm Chef D, and none other than the Codfather is in the house today. How's it going, Ron, Chef? Great to see great you. Great to see you, man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming out to the studio kitchen. This is uh, uh, an honor. Um, we've been doing this for a few years now, being on the show and, we have. and sharing our passion for seafood and, and your passion for seafood. So how long have you been in the seafood game now? 33 years. <laughs> <laughs> what, you started when you were 10? I did, I did. I was very young when I threw out the first line. <laughs> it's going to be like that all day, folks. Anyway, so um, what did you bring us this year? So we have some uh, local Ontario rainbow trout from mm -hmm. Georgian Bay. Probably one of my favorite freshwater fish. I okay. love it, pan fried. I, I have trout probably an average of twice a week. Okay. And then we have some Arctic char from Iceland. Which is my favorite. There you go. <laughs> And then we have uh, True North Atlantic Salmon from the Bay of Fundy. Canadian product, we bring it in four times a week. Absolutely delicious. And I just <laughs> love the, the fat lines throughout the salmon, how moist it is. And it's a great, great piece of fish that, you know, if you're just starting out in, the, in trying seafood, salmon's really great. It's a little bit easier to work with. It is, because of the fat lines, it's a good fat, the omega-3. And you can see it in all three of these products. Mm -hmm. They're the top omega-3. Uh, nutrition fish that we carry but with the salmon chef you're right we call it the ribeye of fish you can mm -hmm. hardly kill it it's so, so moist even if you touch overcook it it mm -hmm. still stays very moist and today we're going to do three different cooking methods with the three different fish we're going to do a sous vide which is really kind of the up and coming way to uh, cook especially seafood and then we're also going to pan um, pan it with a little bit of butter finish it in the oven and then finally, we're going to take that wood-burning pizza oven that we have for another test drive, and we're going to do the Arctic char in the wood oven. Wow, sounds delicious. So, so the sous vide, hey, mm -hmm. when, you, when you cook it in the water, so we can say we take the fish out of the water and we put, put it, it back it, in the water to cook it? Pretty much, pretty much. We're going to put it in um, a Ziploc bag, a freezer, a Ziploc bag. Oh. Now, most people think when they see the water moving here that it's actually boiling. It's not. We programmed it to be 150 degrees, which is a perfect temperature to cook fish in, right. seafood in. And what's gonna happen is a lot of times in your oven, and people don't always realize this, they think when they hit it 350, that's the temperature the, the oven is. Well, in the back, it's probably more like 400, you know, and whenever you open it, the temperature drops and then brings it back up. So this is a really um, easy way to cook seafood or for other matters, some other proteins as well. Um, so we're gonna teach you that in just a second, but Ron, I'm gonna make a lemon burp low. Um, we're going to do a little bit of um, a different way of doing this so that you don't have to worry about your butter ever separating because we're going to use 35% cream. And we're also going to use some, um, I've been making some of my own white wine because I like drinking the really good stuff yes. versus, you know, the, in the muscles. exactly, <laughs> exactly. And that's a, a key. A lot of times people say, oh, you know, you need a really good wine. No, you don't. You know, you need an inexpensive wine will just give it the flavor that you want. So, but Ron, I have some, I know you're a red wine drinker. Yes. So if you, you want to pass me your glass here. Perfect. You know, because we can't cook and not have a little glass well, of wine. Well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, <laughs> right? for sure. And that's a great point about overcooking the fish because the majority of the people overcook the fish and they take the moisture and the flavor right out mm -hmm, of it. Mm -hmm. And it's best to cook fish to medium uh, like a great piece of uh, other protein, I think they call it meat. <laughs> but you know, the the uh, the seafood should be medium, stay mm -hmm. nice and moist, and that's uh, that's definitely the best way to uh, cook it. So we're just going to take um, one onion. If you don't have an onion, you can use a leek, or you you know, um, white onion, Spanish onion, wherever you want to go with this. And this is going to be our lemon butter, our lemon burblo. So we're just going to warm up our pan. What we're going to do first is onion goes in then we're going to put in about a cup of white wine 
Exactly a cup. Yeah, we measure everything. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe a cup and a half. <laughs> See here? And then what we're going to do is we're going to take juice of two lemons. Um, it's funny, you know, and I'm going to drop some names here, but we get to cater for a lot of bands, and this is Jim Cuddy's favorite way to eat fish is with the lemon bourbon. Oh, nice, nice. Of Blue Rodeo fame. So I can tell everybody that Blue Rodeo eats our fish? Is it, that pretty much it. Nice. Well, any time that any band comes through and we serve seafood at Center in the Square, it's your, it's your seafood that is all over oh, it. Oh, that's fantastic. So What's this tool called? This is just a lemon juicer. A little secret, you know, in the summer, it does really good things with limes for margaritas. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Double <laughs> use, I love it. And you can pick this up at Stop Restaurant Supplies. I know Stop Restaurant, great local company. Oh, it's a great company, and it's like I'm like a kid in a candy store when I go in there. Yeah. So anyway, so we got our juice up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring this up to a boil, and we're going to let it reduce down till it's almost nothing. Right. And then we're going to put in 35% cream or whipping cream. Now this is, you have to use whipping wow. cream, because if you use any other, it's going to separate on you, and as we've talked previous, is, and uh, we've talked previous, is that if you use anything else that looks like scrambled eggs, scrambled eggs are great in the morning, but it's not when you want a perfect sauce. So while that's waiting to do its no. thing, I thought we'd get started with a little appetizer. Okay, let's do it. On the last episode, I made some focaccia bread, so we're gonna have some focaccia bread and some mussels. Nice. And these are cultivated mus mussels, right, yes. from PEI? They're from Prince Edward Aqua Farms and PEI. We've been dealing with this company for over 30 years. One of the top names in PEI. Mm -hmm. We get oysters, clams, and mussels from them. And uh, Jerry, the owner, actually comes up to the uh, Kitchener Food and Drink Show and actually samples free mussels every year. So this year it'll mm -hmm. be in April. So I might have to do some cooking with mussels in April then. You might have to. Okay, perfect. <laughs> now, okay, so what we did here is, and this is just really simple, is made a simple tomato sauce. This is my favorite way of eating mussels. You can do them, I, I got some dark beer here from our good friends at Waterloo Brewery. You can add some dark beer and use them in a little bit of onions and garlic for your mussels, or you can do the tomato sauce. And this is just um, tomatoes, onions, garlic, and white wine. Now, we cook the sauce off first, just so that you get lots of flavor in it, then yep. you're gonna add the mussels. And as you can just start seeing, and I'll just show yes. you, is <clears throat> that it's, bring, it's coming up to a boil, now it's starting to bubble, and that's what you want. You want it to be bubbling and um, getting going before you put the mussels in. We're just going to stir it one more time, just uh, away you go, and it just smells amazing in here. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to come up with smell-o-vision. Wow, yeah, no kidding, no kidding. So this is a two-pound bag of mussels that you'd buy at right. your store, and they're in the blue mesh bag that you would see at Coddle's Catch. And we're just going to put these in. And these are cultivated chefs, so you don't yep. have to rinse them, you don't have to do anything with them, they're already cleaned. Right. And no grit, no sand. They're great, they're great appetizers. And sometimes when you bring them home, you see the muscle kind of opening and closing because they're, they're still living. It's still alive when you buy them. That's why it's important that they have air to breathe in the mesh bags. Mm -hmm. And if you ever see one that's open, you can rinse them around in some water and with a spoon and they'll all close up. If it doesn't close up, just discard it. Mm -hmm. and, and when you cook mussels, if they don't open up, then discard it. It's going to take between four and six minutes to cook our mussels. You want to have it that they open up tonally, and any ones that don't open up, you don't eat. Like popcorn. Exactly, right? Yes. Exactly. Yes. That's a good analogy. I never thought about that. <laughs> While it's waiting, I'm just going to have a quick... Well, here, cheers. Cheers, cheers. I have a sore throat. It's going to help my throat, right? Yum, yes. Okay, so this is getting going. We have our sauce getting going. When you come back, we're going to be trying some mussels. So won't you join us? Hey, welcome back. And my guest today in the studio is none other than the Codfather, Ron Cotto himself. Thanks, Chef. It's Thanks good for having to, me. Great to hear. Be great for you to be here. Honest, <laughs> I, I can talk for a living. Well, like we say at Cotto's Catch, we hook them and Chef, we cook them. <laughs> We've been saying that for a long we time. Have, we have. So um, our wine and our onions have reduced down. Our mussels are just perfect. They've yes, they're all up. open. Yep. Beautiful. <laughs> Grab a spoon. Turn that off. 
And it's, it's good to have bread with this too, right, well, Jeff? I, like to I, soak it all up. Exactly. I happen to have a oh, piece wow, for you. Oh, wow. There you go. A little focaccia nice. we made in another episode. And that's what's so great about this. This is not only a great way to appetize, a great appetizer, but it's a great sharing plate as well. And it's one of the most economical types of seafood to have too. These sell for like two fifty a pound in a retail store. So and it's look a how great, many you get. You get like uh, 15 to 17 mussels in a pound. Yep. And uh, it's a great appetizer to have, a great way to start okay, off a meal. So I'll let you put like that. Mm -hmm. If you, here, I'm gonna give you a little sauce, a little bit more, I was a little chintzy on that. Thank you, sir. But just smell how good this wow. smells. Unbelievable. So while you're wow. eating and testing the mussels, I'm gonna add our one cup of cream <clears throat> to our lemons and white wine and onions. And then that, well, that's gonna come, and we're just gonna kind of keep an eye on this because this tends to boil over, trust me on that one. <laughs> and while the, the sauce is doing, doing its thing, we, um, we, we're taking it, just this is a plastic Ziploc bag. Just we, a regular plastic Ziploc, okay. A freezer, the freezer, freezer one, okay. The freezer, okay. You see the salmon that we've cut up? I put it into the bag. I got the air out of the bag. We're gonna set it into our sous vide now. And then in 20 minutes, we're gonna have perfectly cooked salmon. And you can use that in any type of a pod or a dish? A any, t any type. And the only reason why I'm using a plastic one is so that you at home can see what we're doing and uh, away we go. So you can use any kind of uh, big um, pot. It's gonna move 17 liters of water. So anything that size will be okay. perfect. So I've warmed up my pan there and we're gonna put our trout in there. We're gonna put in just a little bit of butter today, Ron. Just a little bit. <laughs> I love pan fried trout. And so what we're gonna do is just kind of move our butter around mm -hmm. and get it to almost be like a brown butter. Right. And you want the butter to kind of totally melt. So then you know the pan's nice and hot because there's a lot of times and it's gonna turn our fan on. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of times that the pan isn't hot enough and then you're just kind of really it steaming cook, it right? and you're very not frying it. Right. And the other great thing is we've left the skin on. Yes. And a lot of people, a lot of people don't like the skin and I get it, but there's a lot of nutrients in the skin there that is. you can have. And, so. and all the skin on this fish here is edible. Mm -hmm. it's, all, it's all been scaled and it's a, a great way to keep the flavor and the moisture in the fish. We're just gonna season it with a little bit of salt. And I'm using a cast iron fry pan here. So it's a heavy bottom and I'm gonna turn it down now because we've got the heat that we want and it's gonna reach in front of you, sorry. Yeah, no problem. Grab a little bit of pepper. And that's all you need. Like you don't need, sometimes we tend to think that we need to put a lot of seasoning on. We want to taste you the don't fish. Have to, that's right. Right. So if you want to make this a little more foolproof and you don't want to, you know, splatter and everything like that, we're, we're searing the skin right now. I'm going to get by you. Why are you using a red frying pan? That look, almost looks like a Montreal Canadian color. And really. <laughs> Can you open up the top oven for me? We're going to put it in. We have it in at 350 degrees. We're going to let it cook for about seven to 10 minutes. That's all you need, probably lower on the, that. Because as Ron mentioned earlier, you definitely want to make it medium. You do not want to make it medium well. Right. Because again, lots of moisture in your seafood. So as it's cooking, it's steaming and finishing the job that, that we have for it. So at Coddle's Catch, you have a super new way of getting your seafood delivered. You can go online and order you it? You can. So, so you can go on our website, coddlescatchseafood.com, and uh, we will deliver across the country. If you had a friend out in Alberta and they, you want to ship them some lobster, we ship it overnight by FedEx. It's in a uh, temperature control box approved by CFIA, so it's a great way to uh, move seafood around the country. And uh, we take online orders for pickup as well at any of our locations. So you can order online, go into the store, it's ready, away you go. Perfect. So you're taking even less time out of it. Yes. And then again, your staff is very highly trained. So you can come in and ask any question of them, right? Right, we have something like 250 years experience combined with all of our staff members that work in retail. So they'll have recipes, we have recipes online. Some of Chef D's mm -hmm. recipes are on our website. Some of our uh, suppliers recipes are on the website. 
and we encourage you to share your recipes with us. Exactly, mm -hmm. and I've seen that. I've seen that on Facebook that you know you've asked, uh, invited people to send their favorite recipes, yes. and away we go. Yes. Uh, just back to ordering online. So last summer we were doing the at the cottage with Chef D. Yes. I'm not a fisherman, folks. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> so we got skunk, and so then I quickly put my online order in. You delivered it up to the cottage country. Yes, it will overnight. We 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 tried it, and it, it works perfectly. FedEx goes to almost anywhere in our listing area mm -hmm. uh, overnight. So uh, get the order in before noon the day before, and you'll have your product the next day. It doesn't <laughs> get much easier than that. Okay, so we have our salmon in our sous vide. We have our trout finishing in the oven. We're going to take our Arctic char. We're going to put it onto, where did my pan go? Right over here. It happens to be another red pan, Ron. No, yes. I'm sorry. We can't I, have a blue pan for the Toronto Maple Leafs. No. we got to have red. No, agreed. So we're going to take this. We're going to take it out to the pizza oven. We're going to um, bake it in the wood-fired pizza oven. When we come back, we'll be finishing up with a little bit of our lemon beurre bowl, like quick, two quick salads that we can put the seafood over. Nice. And away you go. Won't you join us? So we have the pizza oven up to about 400 degrees. Um, now inside is probably closer to 500. And we have lots of coals, as you can see, built up a really great fire. And it's kind of radiant heat. It's not right on the heat. And also, too, you still get a little bit of that beautiful smoky flavor. And the fat of the fish is going to pick up that smoky flavor. And it's going to be absolutely spectacular. Simple, easy, cast iron. Always like using the cast iron in this. I think the fish tastes even better. And away we go. So that's going to be in there probably for about um, 10 minutes, 7 to 10 minutes. And it'll be absolutely perfect. And then you will put a little bit of the lemon butter sauce on it. And we have some seriously great eating. Welcome back with my special guest, the Codfather, Ron Cottle himself from Cottle's Catch Seafood. Um, we've been cooking all over the place today, haven't we? Chef, I can't believe it. It's unbelievable looking. <laughs> so we did our Arctic char in the wood-fired pizza oven. We did our salmon, sorry, salmon, our uh, trout um, in the pan, a little bit of butter, and then we finished it in the oven. Now you could do the whole way through on the pan. Right. And we're, our salmon is in the sous vide, and we're going to bring that out in just a second. But I thought we'd do something a little bit different now. You know, because seafood is, is again, very, very healthy for us. Yes. And that, I'm just going to close the oven. Okay. <laughs> it's getting warm in here. I was wondering why. You get a little sunburn, <laughs> little sunburn on my back. <laughs> um, so, you know, again, healthy. So I wanted to try and keep it really healthy in what we're going to have with our um, assorted seafood. So we have our blue plate <laughs> yes ron <laughs> toronto maple leaf blue yes so we're Close. gonna we're put in some um just lightly steamed asparagus beautiful some blueberries <clears throat> oh wow and just right behind us we have some pea shoots so i'm going to just cut a little bit of pea shoots off for us and they're going to go just like so. Then we're going to take our trout. Nice big piece here. Oh yeah. Put that over top. Wow. Then we're going to take some cognac aged balsamic. Wow. So they age it in cognac casks. Nice. So it gives a little bit of different flavor. Now, again, if you wanted to, you could hit it with a little bit of um, I olive think it, oil. I think you need to hit it with a fork. Uh, the one right beside you, Ron. <laughs> I was all ready for that. While you're eating, and I'm still working. Yes. So, Ron, why did you get into the seafood business? Just for the halibut, Chef. 
<laughs> so, story for that, folks, for those of you who haven't seen before, is that we were doing a live show in front of mm. the audience. At the so Kitchen of America? Exactly. Yeah. I was a little behind in, in getting things and I wanted to get caught up. So I thought if I asked Ron, you know, how he got into the seafood business, he would give me like a three and a half minute answer. Yeah, that's what he gave me. Try three and a half seconds. Exactly. Just for the halibut, yeah. chef. Now what? Okay, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what I have here is I have some corn and some chickpeas. Oh, nice. Let's stir this over like so. We're going to add it. Now, what I've done is just made a simple vinaigrette with some lime juice, uh, mustard, and some canola oil, um, organic canola oil. We're going to take a little bit of black pepper, mm -hmm. some more of our asparagus, because you can never have too much asparagus. What oh. did you think? That's unbelievable. Wow. We're going to stir this together like so. I think I'm getting healthy just looking at it. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on our non Toronto Maple Leaf plates. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> wow, that looks good by itself. We're gonna take our salmon. I can just see, wow. cooked to perfection. We've taken it out of the water. In a freezer plastic bag. That exactly. You can get it any, anywhere. Any grocery store. Yep. yep. Perfectly medium in the center. Wow. Now, I'm going to reach across. To, sorry, Ron. Yep. We have some of our mussels. You're probably wondering what I was, why I was keeping it warm that way. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yes. Look at that. I love the contrast there. That's beautiful. Wow. And people shouldn't be afraid to decorate their plates up like that, eh, Chef? Mm -hmm. Exactly. But a lot of people eat with their eyes as well. Exactly. So we're just going to put wow. a little bit of that beautiful... Oh. Sauce. Okay, confession. I thought about having a muscle during the commercial break, but then I went, you know what? As soon as I do that, I'm going to spill it all over my shirt. <laughs> so I'm going to bring this I don't this think one. you'd notice. <laughs> <laughs> so then, there you like try that. Oh, wow. And Look at that. Nice and moist on the inside. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mmm. Okay. Fantastic. Finally, my favorite, the Arctic char. And it peels right off the skin. It does. Want the skin. Take a little bit of our lemon bourbon or lemon butter sauce. And I just want to show you this is that, you know, it's reduced down now. And what happens is that it takes all the moisture out of the cream, leaves all the fat, so it gives it the same as if you're going to put butter in and whisk it and, and do all that. So wow. it's a really simple, easy way of making a classic sauce. Wow. And I'm not sharing. <laughs> oh, man. That's really great. Ron? Thanks so much for being back on the show again. It's a pleasure. Thanks for bringing some amazing seafood. And I still can't believe you've been in this business for 33 years. Th thank you for showing people how to cook seafood properly. And it, it looks so delicious. Hey, till next time, I'm Chef D. Won't you join me here at my home, the kitchen studio. Look at that. If you want to, you can turn them over halfway through the cooking process. We're not gonna look at it for about two hours. The whole house is gonna smell amazing. The meat's gonna be tender. Hi. Who's that?